Hello, I'm Micah Noel, and thank you for watching Campus and Community Conversations. Today, we are joined by the Director of Continuing Education here at the University, Marty Davis. How are you today? Doing good, doing good. Glad to be here. Yes, I'm so happy. So we're just going to hop right into it, okay? Yeah, let's do so it. So what is Continuing Education for people who don't know? Continuing Education is a uh, department here on campus. We're uh, under academic affairs, and we provide a lot of the, uh, you know, what we call non-credit type courses. Um, we do a lot of uh, corporate training with, with business partners. Uh, we provide a lot of administrative back end to conferences and events if needed as far as registration system and just being the liaison between what might be going on in the university and making sure it's a seamless process uh, for those type things. Um, we do the summer camps uh, here on campus, the academic summer camps. We have a, uh, a pre-K type camp for kindergarten to two year old. And then we uh, started just a couple years ago doing our teen camp where we have uh, sixth grade through 12th grade that, that come on campus in an academic format. So we do, we do, we do a lot of things. We, we got our hands in a lot of different buckets, but you know, we're here to provide a service to the community and we're here to provide any type of support we can for the university. Um, so. We do a lot of different things. Yeah, so one of the main services uh, the program provides is certifications. Mm -hmm. So how many certification programs are currently available? We literally have hundreds um, of online certification type classes. Uh, for example, you might have uh, individuals that wanna get their uh, project management professional certification, which is you know, sought, out, sought after for, with a lot of different industries and, and, and uh, sometimes it can be specialized for healthcare. And uh, a lot of those type classes have licensures involved with them. So you take the class and then after you finish the class, you may study a little bit more and then you go on and, and take a, uh, maybe a national certification. Um, you know, project management, uh, human resources. Uh, we have several, uh, uh, computer science type classes that, that are non-credit, that certification, um, security plus, cybersecurity, those type classes. Um, we have uh, some healthcare type classes that, that we that we offer online um, that require certification. So it's really that prep work, getting someone prepared to take that national certification. Um, uh, oftentimes, employers look up, look upon that as far as. You know, if you've got an individual that wants to advance in their current job, or maybe they want to have some of those credentials to be able to, to seek employment or make a career change. So there, there's a number of different reasons uh, people would have those classes. But, you know, offering them online, we have, like I said, we, we really honestly have hundreds of them people can choose from. Some of them last maybe, you know, three to four months, but you got some that may last all the way up to a year. It all depends on uh, what type of content is needed to cover. And you mentioned that healthcare and CNA are among one of the more popular courses. Why is that? Yeah, we have, we have a large CNA program uh, here on campus. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, you know, we run about 21, 22 students. We have two different sessions. We have a, a Monday and Wednesday session in the evening, and then we have a Saturday all day session. But you know, healthcare is already going, is always going to be um, explosive as far as you know the number of uh, the population as it grows. You know, more people are going to need uh, care later on in life. Um, it's a it's an in demand field. I mean, you can you can look about anywhere, indeed, or anywhere, and see where you know uh, CNAs are needed for hospitals, assisted living homes, uh, uh, nursing homes, and just there's a doctor's offices, I mean, just hospitals. So I just, I just think it's an in-demand type field. Another thing that helps is, um, you know, the School of Nursing here is uh, uh, pretty competitive as far as uh, the nursing program. So they want them to, they want our students to, to know some of those fundamentals and be able to do some of those things as they step into the nursing program. So that's another, another reason it's, it's really popular. Um, and just coming here to University of West Georgia, we, we run our CNA through the Murphy Building. We have a, 
a state-of-the-art classroom and we have uh, our skills lab so it's a real comfortable environment that's in inducive to learning so I, I think that, that's what makes us popular as far as our CNA goes. And speaking on growing fields there are multiple fields that are growing right now mm -hmm. so are there any newer certifications and if we do have newer certifications in progress how how are they built if that makes sense well, yeah right now we're, we're we're looking at you know what can we do for adult learners and if I go back a little bit you know continuing ed historically that's who we bring in is, is, is adult learners there's a lot of people out there that may have uh, a year of college or maybe a two year of college I always use my mom you know when I <laughs> when I was younger she went back to school and we happened to have some of the same classes together <laughs> um, going back. But she never finished. She, mm -hmm. she went two semesters and she never finished. There's a, lot, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are in that situation. And, you know, they might be looking for a career change. Uh, people are working longer. So it's an opportunity to earn more money toward retirement. They might be looking for a change. So right now we're looking at, 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 at bringing in some of those uh, uh, students, those adult learners. And I say that because you know we're working on programs now non-credit kind of classes where people can go in and, and it's called micro credentialing you know you take uh, certain classes in a short period of time and they build up towards something bigger um, so we're, we're working on a web development type class that's more of a micro credential type class where you take three classes each class lasts six weeks and we're working now with um, uh, with other uh, partners here on campus is like if you're an adult learner and you came in and took that web development class, you know, how does that translate into maybe uh, credit hours? And um, uh, maybe people would get uh, excited about going back to school, realizing they could do it, realizing that online is not that scary, realize that, you know, going to school is not that scary. Um, oftentimes I, I go back and, and look at myself as being an adult learner because, you know, I didn't go back until later on in life to get my graduate uh, degree. I had two kids and had a full-time job and I had to, you know, find a program but and, and it made a career change and totally different than what I used to do. But I think down the road you're looking at technologies changing. You know, you hear these different things like Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin and, and, and cybersecurity is still a, a big thing. but. Um, Times are changing, so th th there'll be new programs to be in avail uh, available to meet the, some of those challenges. Yes, and I would like for you to speak on the leadership certificate program. What is that? Yeah, we started that probably uh, probably a year ago, and we put together five or six courses. Uh, maybe uh, you know one of the courses may be named uh, uh, being an authentic leader. Um, they're geared toward that uh, mid professional. Uh, maybe entry-level supervisor or it's just a set of six courses that you can come on campus and take and once you finish those six courses you got different faculty and different instructors teaching each one of them and then when you're finished with that then, then you'll earn a, a leadership certificate by taking those courses and when we first started it you know a lot of times sometimes in continuing ed you, you come up with some programs and you market it and you hope it does well that one did really well. I think we had about 18, 19 students in that. They were all ad adult learners. They were all from all walks of life. Um, a lot of uh, different businesses around participated. So we had that and, and we just started one about three weeks ago and we have 18, 19 in that one again. So it, it's a course that we offer every semester um, on leadership. And again, we just bring in different faculty and, and talk about different things. Um, classes typically last eight to ten hours as a group, um, but it's a good little program that we started. And that's face to face. That's, that's not online. So they come here and they they come to Murphy Building and, and um, able to participate. Yeah. So let's talk about the online courses. Typically, how long is an online course? Does it vary based off the subject matter? Mm -hmm. Like, what does that look like? No, you're exactly right. Um, it varies off subject matter. We have. Uh, some classes that some online classes that are just short six weeks two lessons are dropped a week and 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 you, and you build up to it and then we got some that last you know again almost a year as far as how long you take and, and you're and you're right it has to do with the subject and the um, the content the material this you know 
um, if I just wanted to learn some fundamental basic uh, management skills, then I might take a smaller type class online. But if I'm, I want to take some type of national certification or I want to really dig deep into it, or maybe there's a career that calls upon me to uh, dig a little deeper into it, then I can take some of those. And, um, and you know, and they, they range from price, uh, depending on the content and what you get out of it. Um, one thing that, that I think separates us different from other programs is, is that even though it's online, we still have people in the office to be able to answer questions. Uh, you know, people still have trouble logging in. People still have trouble accessing content sometimes. But one thing that se separates us is we we have people in the office to be able to help with all that to make sure that it's, it's just a smooth process from start to finish. So, as a continuing education participant, do they have access to university resources like tutoring? And if so, what other resources do they have access to? You know, typically not. It, you know, it's, it's non-credit. They come in under a, a non-admission type um, scenario. There, there's not any additional fees uh, to be paid or anything like that. But, you know, depending on the class and depending on how the program, uh, they typically have access to faculty who come in and teach. You know, we got a lot of good faculty here with, with, with years of experience. Uh, both in the private setting and the educational setting. But if there are programs that are designed to touch upon some of the highlights here at the university, then, then we may incorporate some of those things. Um, for example, is our summer camp, and I know we may talk about that for a minute, but you know, that was one of the things that uh, when, we, when we just talked about doing these summer camps for these kids that are six to 12, we really wanted to not only expose them to, to, to our faculty and some of the learning that we do and some of the hands-on things we do, we wanted to also expose them to what we have here at the university because a lot of people don't know what we have. You know, we've got access to uh, uh, the virtual lab here. We have access to, to, to the campus center, which is a beautiful building. Um, uh, of course, we all enjoy the dining hall, you know, when we <laughs> yeah. get in there. So, so we have all these things here at the university that we want people to know about. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't know we have stuff. So, you know, when we have an opportunity through Continuing Ed uh, to showcase the, th the different uh, uh, areas of the university, we, s we certainly would do that. Yeah, so you talk about showcasing different areas of the university, and you've been dropping hints here and there mm -hmm. about the youth programs or the youth mm -hmm, camps mm -hmm. here. So how long have the youth camps been a part of continuing education? Well, we've always had the, um, the younger uh, camp, the K through uh, maybe two years old, three years old. We've had that for as long as I've been here and even before that. and. Um, and, and, and it's usually kids that may have gone through the pre-K here at the university and then given them opportunity to be here. But in the last couple years, our focus has, has, our focus has been on showcasing the university so, to some of, uh, some of the teens and uh, letting them see what we have to offer. Um, oftentimes, you know, maybe with you and, and, and myself and, and, and others, you know, you only really get to see the university when you come and visit, when you come and, and, and go through the admission process and stuff. Let's go ahead and show it to them. You know, let, let's get them while they're young and, and let them come look at what we have to offer. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's kind of funny. Um, but when, I, when I was in high school, I'm from South Georgia. I, mean, I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but, but I, I'm from South Georgia. And um, <clears throat> I remember in ninth grade, coming up here to a debate tournament. And, and, and I remember walking around campus and that was the first time that I'd ever been on a college campus was in ninth grade for that debate tournament. And uh, I remember walking on campus and, and, and thinking how cool it was. Now, of course, as I got older, I might have visited other schools, but, but I remembered West Georgia from ninth grade coming up here to that debate tournament. And, um, you know, that, that was the only time I've been here, but, but first time I'd been here until I came back and started working here. So those are the type of things that, that I think we're trying to do with some of the summer camps is showcase our faculty, showcase some of the hands-on 
uh, things that we do here, the, the, you know, the biology building is a cool little place to walk through and being able to see those things and being in the chemistry department and you, and, and you see, I guess they're still called Bunsen burners or whatever, and they're all, they're going. So, so all that stuff's pretty cool. So we want to bring them on campus, let them see it, let them get that feel of what it's like being here. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the long run, it pays big, it pays dividends as far as them maybe wanting to come back and, 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 and be a wolf. So what programs can teens be a part of throughout the youth camps? Oh gosh, that, yeah, that's, our faculty has been really, really good about uh, giving some of their time and to lead some of these programs. Um, for example, you know, we've had uh, faculty in the art department and, um, you know, showing them how to do the old screen press where you put down a piece of paper and pour the ink on the, and, you know, make, make cards and, and, and do stuff like that. Um, we have a uh, forensic camp. We, we, you know, it doesn't get, doesn't get messy, but you know, it shows them what goes on behind the scenes, you know, like a blood splatter and liquid and how far it's supposed to splatter and how far it doesn't splatter and being able to uh, determine, you know, the, it's usually like forensic science is usually like a whodunit, you know, whodunit yes. type theme when they come in on that Monday and they learn to use some of the equipment in there. And, um, you know, uh, I, th I think they, study fingerprints, you know, how do people do that? Just real hands-on stuff. Um, we have a, uh, of course, you know, the favorite camp I think is eSports camp. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Joe Lee does a great job uh, with that program and them kids come in and, and uh, you know, typically toward the end of the day when they're winding down, they typically wind down toward the end of the day, but they stay in that eSports camp. And here's something that's pretty cool when we talk about showcasing what we have at the university. Um, that first year we did eSports. You, you know, when you play some of those games, it's pretty much worldwide as far as, you know, who you're playing with and stuff like that. But Joe actually found a eSports camp going on in Virginia. And they had arranged Friday to play each other. <laughs> so they were So they got to play some of those games with another sports camp going on in Virginia. So, so stuff, stuff like that is pretty cool. I mean, typically that stuff wouldn't be set up at home or some of the other camps that they may participate in. So it's things like that, uh, w w you know, being able to showcase uh, those activities there. Yeah, so not only do you have programs for the teenagers, but you also have programs for third through fifth graders. Mm -hmm. So what can parents expect for their children for those camps? Athletics does a great job in, in having some camps. Um, they're all sports camps where they bring in some of those kids and uh, burn off some of that energy and participate in games and activities and and um, and, and the, you know you would think they're pretty young but they still is still part of showcase showcasing the campus I mean those kids are gonna remember being here and, and doing the things they do and playing the games and eating in the dining hall I mean they're gonna remember all those things you know throughout their life and it might be a handful of them might say, hey, you know, you remember that time I did that camp at West Georgia? Now, I think I want to go back and go take a look. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's those kind of things. And um, so there's activities uh, for, the, for the younger kids and for them to be exposed. Um, uh, the uh, archaeology program that we've got, you know, we even the younger kids get to go down there and look at some of that stuff. And it's like being in a museum, really, mm -hmm. you know, when you see some of that things. So we, we uh, provide uh, some of those programs, too, for, for the young, younger kids. Yes. So is there anything in the near future that people can look out for um, for this program? I heard you guys are going to be involved in Winter West festivities very yeah. soon. Can you talk about that? Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be, we will help with uh, Winter West this year. And one thing that we are helping with uh, particular is we're going to have a few faculty member there, faculty members there doing some demonstrations um, on a few of the nights. Last year we had um, uh, a gentleman from the art department who did, uh, showed how to do the old clay pottery, you know, how to, how to turn the clay into pots and uh, I can't remember the official name for it, the round table that spins, but we had that. Um, we had some um, uh, uh, professors from the um, science department who uh, 
you know, made snow and dry ice and some of that, th some of those things. Um, we, what else we had? We had um, uh, archaeology came down there and um, they made these, uh, I don't know, these necklaces that, that, that may have been worn, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but they did them in a holiday theme where they were, you know, uh, I think they're called gro groglets or, gro I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> but they came, so we'll have faculty there showcasing during Winter West uh, some of the things that we do. Again, that's to spark interest and in, in, in showcase it. And we'll also have uh, some uh, games there for them, holiday themed games for the kids to play and be able to participate in. Um, so they'll be able to come, come and do that. Um, we will have a faculty member <clears throat> making some Victorian style stockings, things that might have been, you know, shown years ago. Uh, she'll be making some of those and showing uh, the community how to make some of those things. So again, that's just a showcase to show our faculty, show the hands-on learning we do and just show the cool things that, that go on at West Georgia. Wow, that sounds amazing. It is. It is a big, it was a huge crowd last year. Hope we have a huge crowd uh, this year. Um, you know, uh, we had a snow machine going last year, and uh, somebody named Santa, I think, you know, will be there. Santa. Yeah, I think he'll be there. But um, it's just a, it's just an opportunity for the community to to come on campus and and you know the art department they make some of the ornaments that you see out there that are that are lit up and have the lights. Um, the art department makes some of those things. We'll have there'll be vendors there um, selling some some goods. So it's just a, it's just a great time for 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 evenings for the community to to come on campus and to see what we got going on. That once again, that sounds absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. It is fun. It's and a good time. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no thank problem. you so much for watching us. Um, I'm Micah Noel, and we will see you next time.